The Apple HomePod, which is Apple's $350 smart speaker that's powered by Siri, came out about five months ago now. So it's basically a competitor to the Amazon Echo and the Google Home. I wanted to wait until after WWDC to do a more in-depth review, just in case they made any updates to it, which they did not. So now that I've had a chance to actually use it every day, there are a lot of things to like about the HomePod, but there's definitely a lot of improvements that could be made. The HomePod itself is about seven inches tall, five and a half inches wide, and it weighs about five and a half pounds. So it's a small, dense, heavy feeling speaker. Wrapped around the outside is this seamless mesh fabric that Apple says is acoustically transparent, so it's not meant to interfere at all with the audio. There's one subwoofer that faces straight up and fires upward, and around the bottom in a 360 degree pattern are seven tweeters. Along the back, you'll see that there's a braided cord sticking out that's not removable, and on the bottom is the silicone base that the HomePod sits on. And then on top, you'll see the touch surface, which is used to activate Siri, adjust the volume, and go to next track or previous track. So when you first take the HomePod out of the box, you're gonna notice how easy it is to set up using your iPhone or your iPad. Basically, once you plug it in, something's gonna pop up on the screen and guide you through the setup, and that's it, it's ready to use. And the HomePod is a speaker, so the first thing you're most likely gonna do is try to play some music. And it does sound really good, especially for its size. You get a lot of deep bass, and it uses all the speakers in a 360 degree pattern along the bottom to kind of bounce the audio off the walls in the room that it's in to give you a fulfilling sound. One of the first things I noticed besides the audio quality is how well it can hear the wake word. I found that the HomePod was much better at hearing the wake word than the Amazon Echo and the Google Home. The other night I was trying to tell my phone to turn off some of the lights and the HomePod, which was in a completely different room, heard me say the command and it actually turned off the lights. So that's really nice because it also can hear you really well when there's music playing. You can talk in a normal volume voice and it'll hear you even across the room. So as I said, the HomePod is powered by Siri, and Siri doesn't really have that all that great of a reputation. But for basic things like checking the weather and setting a timer, it works. It's, there's no issues. And it's really nice too because you can use it to send messages through your phone. And the other main part of the HomePod is playing music. So you can use Siri to play music through your any music you have purchased on iTunes or if you're subscribed to Apple Music. It works really well. Another thing I was excited about with the HomePod is being able to integrate it with the HomeKit setup that I already have. So HomeKit is Apple's smart home system that's built into all of its devices. And I really like it because I can share it with everyone else in my household and any changes I make also get changed on their device. So once you plug in the HomePod and log in with your Apple ID, it's immediately set up as the Home Hub, which means you can turn lights on and off or open shades or anything else you have when you're not at home. And I found it to work really well because there's really no setup and you can activate all your scenes right out of the box. And the other great part about the HomePod is it has AirPlay built in, which is Apple's audio streaming technology. So you can hook it up to an Apple TV and have the audio from your Apple TV go to the HomePod. And also anyone else that has an iOS device can send any music or audio from their device to the HomePod. It's really quick and easy. So there are a lot of great things about the HomePod, but there's definitely room for improvement. Number one, Apple markets the HomePod as a speaker, not as a smart home assistant. And I think that's important to remember because of Siri's shortcomings. There are a lot of issues with Siri, and I'm not sure that it's gonna be able to be fixed anytime soon. But the problem with it being marketed as a speaker is that there is no inputs for any other audio sources. You can only use AirPlay, which means you can only send audio to it from another Apple device like an iPhone or an iPad or a Mac. There's no headphone jack, 
There is Bluetooth, but it's only used for the setup process. You can't stream to it. And as I said, the audio quality is really good in a small room or maybe even a kitchen when you're gonna be standing close to it. But when you put it in a larger room, like most living rooms, you are definitely gonna be able to tell that it's just one speaker, say if you place it in the corner. You are able to pair two of them as a stereo pair, and I think that might be necessary if you wanna get a really great sounding setup in a living room. So since there aren't any inputs, if you're subscribed to a different music service other than Apple Music, you won't be able to ask Siri to play something off your Spotify playlist or any other streaming service. So you have to use AirPlay. And using AirPlay is somewhat limited. You can still have Siri go to the next song, but you can't ask it to play a certain song. And also I wish that there were more availability for other apps to build, be built into the HomePod, like TuneIn Radio. I frequently ask my Echo to play a radio station. And it's really nice because it just works. There was no setup involved. Apple's always been really good at making their products just work together. But the HomePod is kind of weird because it doesn't, it does some things really well, but not other things. Like you can have it send a text message, but if you ask it to make a phone call, it can't do it. And as I said, the HomePod hears you really well, which most of the time is great. But if I'm looking right at my phone, asking it to make a call, and the HomePod hears it, it's gonna tell me that it can't do it, even though I had my phone right in front of me. And as I said, you can send messages, but that's only with the contacts that are built into the Apple ID that was used to set up the device. There isn't any voice recognition on the device, so it doesn't know if someone else in your family is asking the question. It's always gonna base it off of whoever set it up in the first place. So there's definitely a lot of room for improvement in that area, making it more family friendly. And I also wish that they would let you control the Apple TV using it. You can't have it do really anything. You can't have it open Netflix or Amazon Prime or even a movie that you purchased using iTunes. It just doesn't work together. The only other little annoyance that I have is with Siri, and it's maybe not a big deal to everybody, but Siri is still too wordy. On certain scenes that I have set up, if I have Siri activate the scene, it'll say something like, like if I say goodnight, it'll say goodnight, goodnight to you, something like that, when all I want it to do is just say okay, or like the echo, just play a tone and do the command. I don't need any feedback. I also think that Siri sometimes can try and be too funny, like if I ask what's up or what's new, what I'm really asking is for an update on what's going on, maybe with the weather or in the world with news, but it just gives me a joking response how it's improving its capabilities. It's not really useful. So as I said, there wasn't really any mention of the HomePod at WWDC, which is a bit concerning because I think there's a lot of simple things that can be improved on right away, like the timers, how you can't set more than one timer and you can't name them. So I wish they would have mentioned some of that stuff. I am hopeful that the updates are coming because it really is a great sounding speaker and I want to like it more than I do. I use a lot of Apple's other products and the HomePod just isn't good enough yet for me to use it. So I'm hoping that they are working on it and make a lot of improvements in the near future.